Hey, don't forget, I really want your feedback on the show. When you finish listening to this episode, look for the listener survey in the show notes. This episode is part of the Season 2 series on self. Welcome to another episode of Art Heals All Wounds, where we explore the intersection between art and well-being. I'm your host, Pam Uzel. You know, there have been studies that assert that human beings are inherently compassionate and innately cooperative. When I look at the news, that's not what I'm seeing. I know that I sometimes have a hard time connecting with those aspects within myself. Sometimes I feel like I don't even have a space to take a breath, much less act from compassion and generosity. Does that happen to you? Stress to get things done, to earn money, that stress can weigh on me. Now imagine if the basics of housing and food were covered for you. What would that feel like? Removing at least that one thing off of you. You might suddenly feel as if you were floating, and I'm wondering if compassion and generosity might take the rightful place as the core of who you are. Now imagine a society where that weight was removed from everyone. Buoyant. This is how my next guest, Chris Watts, who goes by the creationist, describes feeling after being selected for the Guaranteed Income for Artists program in San Francisco. Chris Watts is an artist living and working in San Francisco, California. According to Chris, we are all created to create. For Chris, art comes from a place of stillness and introspection. This deep connection to self is where he finds the inspiration for the colors, textures, shapes, and language that cover his canvas, a visual invitation for connection to others. I invited Chris on the show to talk about this beautiful work and to share how participating in the Guaranteed Basic Income Program for Artists through the City of San Francisco has made a difference in his life and his ability to practice his art. Before we meet today's guest, I want to tell you about an app called Newsly. Newsly is an all-in-one audio super app for iOS and Android. There really hasn't been an app like Newsly before now. Newsly picks up all of the trending articles on the web and reads them to you in a natural human voice. You can find any topic you're interested in, sports, politics, or art. I've loved using this app. I listen to it when I'm commuting or when I'm gardening or while I'm cooking, anytime where I want to catch a little bit of news, but my hands are full or I can't stop to read. You can also find trending podcasts from over 50 countries on Newsly, including Art Heals All Wounds. Newsly has become my go-to listening app for podcasts. If you want to try Newsly yourself, just download it from www.newsly.me. And if you use the promo code ARTHEALS, you'll get a free one-month premium subscription. I'll include all of this info in the show notes so that you can just click on the link and use the Art Heals promo to get your free trial. Now, let's meet this week's guest. Well, hi, Chris. Thank you so much for being on this episode of Art Heals All Wounds. Can you start by introducing yourself, telling us what you do? Of course. Also, thank you for having me here. Really grateful for this podcast. My name is Chris Watts. I'm a human being, first and foremost, and then I am a creator. 
And what I do is I create beautiful works of art, hopefully that can invite others into experiencing the beauty that is within inside all of us, you know, and hoping that my aim is to help others see that. And that's why I do what I do. Well, it's interesting because I read on your website something that I thought was really wonderful. You said, I believe we're all created to create. Yes. That's a vision that challenges our perceptions on what it means to be human. And I thought that was really lovely. And especially considering that your social media tags are all the creationist, which some people might take that to as creationism. Yes, exactly. So I appreciated that you stated that that's not what you're talking about. And I thought that was a really beautiful idea. And I, it resonated with me a lot. Thank you very much. I did want to ask you about one more thing, which maybe you'll feel like is a tangent, but the other little morsel I found on your website, which I thought was fascinating, was that up until the age of two, you were virtually deaf due to sort of nonstop ear infections. Yeah. And that your mother kept trying to like reach you, but you were unable to hear. And I'm just wondering if you can share a little bit about that, what your thoughts are about that period and you know, either with discussions with your mom or just your own contemplation of. Yeah, that. I, thank you for asking me that. It is something that I do think about a lot. And I feel like and it's funny because my mom would tell me stories about like she would try to get my attention mm -hmm. and I wouldn't connect in that way because I couldn't hear her. And so or my dad, too, you know, they would just kind of be like, OK, like what's going on? And so that's how they found out I was having ear infections. Mm. But how I think that's helped me is it's helped me to become more observant and to feel people, you know, to feel my environment. And so just not being able to hear, it really helped me read people and to feel into what was going on. And so it's definitely like helped me. Even sound is different for me sometimes, you know, not on like a crazy level, but I would say that's helped me become more visually oriented and like just sense oriented. Mm, mm, that's so fascinating. So we got in touch because I read about you seeing that you were one of the recipients of an artist stipend provided through the city of San Francisco. And this is something that I would love to see not only continued, but expanded. So I'm wondering if you could tell me how that came about. How did you find out about this stipend? How did you get it? At first, I had a friend who had sent me the post on Instagram. And they were mm -hmm. like, hey, you should definitely apply to this. I think you can get it. And at first, I didn't know who the person was who sent it to me. Mm -hmm. And come to find out, just like quick fast forward, that it was my friend who I've met a couple years back. And she's invited me to like museums and like shows and stuff like that. And so I was like, man, who is this angel who <laughs> sent me this thing? Like, I don't even know this person. Right. Yeah. And so I applied to the program, you know, reading the requirements and like, how they go about choosing people, it stuck out to me that it was random. And mm -hmm. so I applied to it. And then a couple of days later, one of my great friends, Daniel, sent me the same link. And I was just like, okay, oh, wow. Like I told, and then I told him I already applied to it and he applied to it as well. And then I just wiped it from my mind. And then I got an email, I think in like April or something like that. And there were some things that you had, like you had to send in like your income and things like that. And so then I was like, oh, is this like for real? You know, is this like mm -hmm. actually going to happen? And then again, I was just like kind of putting it in the back of my mind because it was random. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get chosen. If I do, that's awesome. If I don't, I applied like it's OK. Right. And then in May, they told me I was selected and I was just like, wait, what? You know, and so. I was just like floored and really grateful that I'm able to take part in this program and advocate for this thing that I feel like is 
so important for just all human beings. And I think not just for artists necessarily, but like it's beautiful in San Francisco, how it is for artists, because it can be a challenge, you know? And so having that extra security is really important. Yeah. And that's interesting because you brought up being in San Francisco, it's challenging for a lot of people. And the irony of it is that San Francisco and the Bay Area in general is known for the arts, but it's become a place that is increasingly has priced out artists. This stipend was for six months mm -hmm. for $1,000 a month for 130 artists. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about maybe what some of the limitations are. But first, I want to know, do you have a clear idea in your mind, sort of the before and after getting this stipend for you personally? I do. When I first started getting serious about wanting to create and just like when I decided it was like my junior year of high school, towards the beginning year of my senior year, I knew I wanted to create and I knew that there were going to be challenges. Mm -hmm. I knew it wasn't going to be all cakes and rainbows. You know, I knew the very real challenges that I would have to face. Mm -hmm. And so I knew going into this life, to me, it's, it is my life. I knew what the challenges were. Mm -hmm. And so I would say the very real differences was like, okay, now I created because I needed to. Mm -hmm. I still do the same thing even after I got accepted into this program. But now I feel more like a sense of buoyancy in the mm -hmm. sense of like, I don't have to worry about, okay, where's my money going to come from next? Mm -hmm. And for me, this program it's not making me realize, but it's really helping me see that once people have basic necessities covered, there's so much that we can do mm. as a species. And I've always believed that it's just the fact that now it's a very real present reality for me. And if I had the affluence that a lot of these billionaires and people have, I would definitely create a program like this because once you have the time and space to think about what you love to do and you freed up a lot of mental space, you begin to think about, okay, what's important to me? Mm -hmm. What do I want to share? What do I want to create? What have I always wanted to do that can give to me, but also give back to others? Mm -hmm. And then I feel like it just becomes this domino effect because then also got interviewed for it, which was also a really big opportunity, really grateful for it. The question that I asked was, what's something that you love about yourself that you wish you can give to the whole world? Mm. And people had really beautiful answers. Look at that. People are inherently wanting to give something that they love about themselves to the world. And imagine the space that extra money provides for people to do that. Right. That's so interesting. Like the implications for having that sort of financial safety net mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. It does sound like one thing that you discovered was that it's sort of a key to unlocking an inherently generous aspect of human nature, mm -hmm. which I've always read that we are inherently generous, we're inherently compassionate. For sure. But... Perhaps that gets lost. You you said that you felt buoyant mm -hmm. after getting this, the, or a sense of buoyancy. That is such a great way to describe it because I think when you say that, it makes me realize how our you know financial stress can crush us and weigh us down. Ah, that's so interesting. Well, I don't know for sure. You only get it for six months. Has the program ended for you, or are you still? It actually extended. For oh. another year. Oh my gosh. To 18 months? Yeah, for 18 months, basically. So we got our first stipend in May, and then yeah. it ends October in 2022. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's really different from what I read. And it's kind of a game changer because six months of financial help, it's wonderful. Yeah. But 18 months is really a, a substantial mm -hmm. amount of time for someone to really come out of that space of feeling the stress and then just sort of blossom in terms of what they're going to do with that. For sure. For yeah. sure. It was a really great 
to hear that news too, because I think Jack Dorsey had donated. I think I forgot what the program is called, but Jack Dorsey had from Twitter. Yeah, from Twitter had given. I forgot how much to. I think I don't know if it's the city of San Francisco or like YBA specifically. Your Your Buena Center of the Arts. Yeah, Center for the Arts, and so. Then they took that money and then just extended the program. Wow. Which is a huge blessing. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you have any inside scoop, but is this a program that the city is considering, A, continuing, and then B, expanding at all? Do you know? Yeah, there definitely has been a lot of talks. There's an Instagram called Guaranteed Inc. or INC. Uh And, you know, it's advocating for, especially in like, from what I know so far is they want to extend it to like the rest of the Bay Area. Mm. And they want more people, more artists to experience this, you know, Mm. Um, I can't wait for like, actually, like everyone who needs it to experience it. And it's really cool because I was contacted personally by someone from Ireland through Instagram and they had contacted me because they had saw the article as well and they wanted to know what it was like and because they're in an artist union in Ireland and so their artist union is figuring out how to bring it to the artists in Ireland. Mm. So it's been a really cool domino effect. It's been really great watching it like, wow, like people are starting to pick it up. There's even a separate program, I think, in Minnesota. Oh, yeah. So they do especially want to expand it. Mm -hmm. I don't know because, I mean, I'm not on the inside inside, but it's the I don't know if they're going to extend it to other people beyond October. Mm -hmm. But who knows? We'll see because I feel like that's a lot of time between now and October 2022 for this program to gain traction and awareness so that people are like, Okay, I think it's like the perfect time for it too, you know, because Mm -hmm. with the current structure of our world and also just like the paradigm that we're living under right now, you know, we're starting to see that they need it. One stimulus check every so like, it's almost been like almost every six months or like every year. Right. That's not enough to help people, especially here in the United States. We have so much to give. And there are other countries who have actually been giving their their citizens there actually more money per month. And it's the very real pressing reality that America needs this, aside from other things as well. Right. But it's really important. I just don't want people to be like stressed out. Yeah. I just want to underline that because it's not a small deal. The phrase stressed out, you're like, oh, that means when I'm rushing to get dinner on the table or something. Mm -hmm. But the type of stress that you're talking about is day in, day out, am I going to lose my home? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be able to buy food? Which is a choice a lot of people in the Bay Area make constantly. And this idea that they're in danger of losing their home is on the minds of so many people in the Bay Area and beyond. We're not the only place with this problem, but oh, for sure, we see it here for sure. And we see people who have lost their homes. And even if you have a home, that sort of society affects everyone, which is the part I kind of don't get why people don't see how if they have a home, but how homelessness is affecting them as well. Exactly. Or the stress. And I do want to talk a little bit about now some of your goals, especially now that this has been extended to 18 months. How has this changed your goals as an artist, just knowing that you have another year of support? I feel like, to be frank, it it hasn't necessarily changed my goals or how I want to operate because it's just now I I have more resources to do so. Mm. And for me, how this has helped me see like a broader vision is like the work that I'm especially creating now. That's why I'm so grateful to be on this podcast because, you know, art heals all wounds. I firmly believe that. And the work that I'm creating now, I want to invoke 
a sense of harmony and like mm. peace within the individual. For me, it's like, I remember seeing like an Ari Matisse for the first time. And I was just like, art doesn't have to be chaotic. Art doesn't have to be a bunch of noise. If someone could look at what you've created and find peace for however long that they have found it, that's like a seed. Right, right. Well, it's interesting because since we first connected, I feel like I've noticed new work that's been going up on your website and also on Instagram. And first of all, in terms of colors that you're using, it is really inviting of contemplation, which is a form of peace in and of itself. Am I making this up because it what what it reminded me of, or do you refer to some of it as hieroglyphics in your work? Am I making that up because that's what I thought when I saw some of your work? No, you're not making it up. It's actually my alphabet. So ah. I created an alphabet with the same nature of a hieroglyph. So okay. hieroglyphs they work on us. Words and pictures have a different kind of effect on us, you know. Right. And when you look at a hieroglyph, it's affecting you, but on a subtle level. Mm. And so what I decided to do was create an alphabet, which would sort of do the same thing, but more of like on a level where people can grasp it, you know, from Mm. our time. It's like, okay, I created an alphabet. You can follow the alphabet and it's up for you to decide whether you want to decode it or not but I feel like my intention for the pieces is to show that when people are in that state of contemplation or peace the answer will come and they Mm. don't necessarily need to like go and decode it you Mm -hmm. know they can they have the tools within them for them to recognize and listen to the peace because I feel like for me I believe that the peace is alive and it's talking Mm. to the individual Mm. So if we can listen to that and just observe what is going on, it gives us room to be like, that's what that word is. I feel like you just gave a really great definition of what really good art does in general. This idea of contemplation Mm. and communication to the person who is observing or engaging with that piece Mm. of art. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's really interesting. Well, Chris, thank you so much for being on the show today and talking about your work and talking about the stipend through the city of San Francisco. If people want to find out more about you, where can they find you? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on this incredible podcast. Thank you for the work that you're doing, you know, speaking to people and just helping others share their story. You know, Mm. I think it's really powerful. Oh, thank you. And they can find me on Instagram at the.creationist. And also I have a website and it's thecreationist.us. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And I'm very happy for you that you are able to find the space to do what you're doing. Thank you so much, Pam. And yeah, thank you for this podcast. Blessings to you. You Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. You too. You're listening to Art Heals All Wounds. I'm so grateful to Chris Watts for sharing his experience of how having a guaranteed stipend has enabled him to grow, not just as an artist, but as a human being. We need our artists and they need financial support. But wouldn't it be wonderful to explore ways in which the stress of trying to just make ends meet could be lifted for everyone, just a little bit? I hope you'll check out Chris's work on his website, thecreationist.us, 
and look for him on Instagram at the.creationist. I also hope you'll do some reading on basic income programs for artists, both here in SF and in other cities. These programs work. The music you've heard in this podcast is Yellow Light District by Lobo Loco. Beethoven's Piano Sonata No. 15 in D major was performed by Karine Galanian. The music you heard in the intro was by Ketza. This podcast was edited by Eva Hristova. Thank you so much for listening to Art Heals All Wounds. Have you taken the listener survey yet? Before you leave your listening app, please look for the link in the show notes and give me your feedback. It only takes a couple of minutes and it really helps me if I know your thoughts on the show. Thank you.